This is Mission Control Houston aboard Discovery. The crew's uh, prepared and ready for a deorbit burn. If uh, the go-ahead to proceed with that is given uh, by Mission Control, this uh, for the second of uh, three landing opportunities today. This uh, opportunity also to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The first opportunity was waved off uh, as weather worsened there uh, during that time frame. Uh, some improvement has been seen in low clouds, uh, which which were one of the main reasons uh, for the wave off of the first attempt, as well as a uh, change in the direction of the winds uh, that has put them more uh, down the runway and uh, reduced uh, crosswinds uh, for a landing at KSC. Final decision uh, on whether or not to proceed uh, with this engine firing by Discovery, scheduled to take place at 12.14 p.m. Central Time, is expected uh, in about 10 minutes or so at around uh, noon. Again, that engine firing at 12.14 uh, p.m. Central would uh, put Discovery on course uh, to culminate in a touchdown at runway 15 at the Kennedy Space Center at 1.19 p.m. Central Time. This view from a camera mounted atop the uh, vehicle assembly building at the Kennedy Space Center looks out uh, to the west, the direction uh, from which uh, clouds are coming towards the Kennedy Space Center. It's thought that uh, they will dissipate uh, a good amount as uh, as uh, time progresses. Currently weather forecasters are refining uh, that and updating their forecast uh, one final time. For information uh, on a decision uh, that's expected to be reached around noon central time in just about 10 minutes or so. For this uh, opportunity for landing in Florida, Discovery would fire its engines uh, for a total of about 3 minutes and 56 seconds, uh, just under 4 minutes, to begin the descent. Approximately uh, 33 minutes later, Discovery would first encounter the effects of Earth's atmosphere at an altitude of about 400,000 feet, a point uh, called by flight controller's entry interface. Discovery's uh, course across North America would have it uh, make landfall just south of Alaska above Canada, uh, across central Canada, and uh, move across the central United States in, in route to Florida. On its final approach to the shuttle landing facilities runway 15, Discovery would perform a left overhead 349 degree turn to align with the runway. Again, uh, flight controllers are getting the latest weather information as has been the case all morning and uh, plan to make a decision in the next few minutes uh, regarding whether or not to proceed with a engine firing by Discovery and uh, descent and return to Florida on this second opportunity of the day. We do expect uh, for this engine firing by Discovery to have uh, communications with the spacecraft uh, throughout the duration of the firing. Discovery is presently uh, several hundred miles to the east off the South American coast, the coast of Argentina on a southerly track that will take it uh, down into the extreme South Atlantic. And uh, then into the extreme Southern Indian Ocean. This is Houston Cam. Go ahead. I still have you very faint. Okay, you're loud and clear here. Let me check with Mila.
LRD Houston Comtech on 259.7, do you read? Houston, this is NCC. You're Convoy, this is Houston, Comtech on 259 do you read? Houston Com, this is NCC, you're still very faint. Roger, let me check with Milo again. NCC, this is Houston Comtech on UHF. This is NCC. That's a little bit better. Okay, uh, we need to know, is the convoy in the middle of the runway or at the end of the runway? Convoy is still at the midfield park side. At the midfield, okay. Uh, let's point, let me get them to point the antenna. Convoy, this is Houston Comtech on 259.7. How do you read now? Houston, this is Convoy Commander. It's, you're still very faint. Okay, I copy that. Com. This is NCC, UHF. This is Houston Comtech. Uh, say again, NCC. Houston, I've got you on my other UHF channel, and I've got you five by. Okay, uh, very good. Uh, and LRD, uh, Houston Comtech, how do you read on 259.7? This is LRD, and I read you loud and clear. Uh, Rog, you're loud and clear also. Thank you much. Firm, let me uh, let me get over there. Okay, they're coming over uh, to meet you now.
Discovery Houston with an update. Go ahead, Charlie. Charlie, we're seeing continued improvement. We're still working it real hard just to make sure we're all comfortable down here. Since the maneuver is only going to take four minutes, we're going to hold off on the maneuver to the uh, deorbit burn attitude. And uh, I'd like to give you a heads up at this time about our uh, LOS AOS times approaching the burn. We'll go LOS four minutes pre-burn, pick you up AOS one minute pre-burn, and we'll be in calm throughout the burn. That's correct.
Discovery Houston, you have a go to maneuver to the deorbit burn attitude. We'll have a go for a call on the uh, go for the burn here shortly. Okay, Charlie, we're in the maneuver. Understand, uh, awaiting the go for the burn. Good copy. This is Mission Control Houston. That call to Discovery uh, instructed Bolden to begin maneuvering Discovery to the proper orientation for an engine firing to begin its descent to Florida. Again, this engine firing uh, would occur in about seven and a half minutes. The crew is still awaiting a go from Mission Control uh, to proceed with the engine firing. However, they are maneuvering Discovery into position uh, for that firing. Again, uh, the burn is scheduled to begin at 12.14 p.m. Central Time. Would be an almost four minute long firing of Discovery's orbital maneuvering system engines. And uh, culminate in a touchdown at the Kennedy Space Center's shuttle landing facility runway 15 at 1.19 p.m. Central. Flight Director Jeff Bannell is now polling operators in mission control for a go for the deorbit burn. Discovery Houston, you have a go for the deorbit burn. Roger Houston, go for the burn. Now with that call, Discovery is cleared to proceed with uh, engine firing. Scheduled to begin now in six and a half minutes. Four minute long firing of the orbital maneuvering system engines that will begin its descent to Florida, culminating in a touchdown at runway 15 at 119 p.m. Central. Discovery's crew will now be preparing to start one of the auxiliary power units on board, one of the three auxiliary Three, power units. Two minutes to LOS. It'll be a one-minute LOS. Okay, Charlie, talk to you when you come back. The auxiliary power units supply power to operate the hydraulic systems on the shuttle. Again, uh, one auxiliary power unit is started about uh, five minutes ahead of the deorbit burn, and then the other two are started uh, once the burn is completed. We'll lose communications with Discovery for just about one minute as it moves out of range of our satellite tracking system. However, we do expect full communications with the spacecraft uh, for the duration of this engine firing. Mission Control Houston, the Mechanical Systems Officer reports Auxiliary Power Unit Number 2 is now up and running and uh, in good shape. Discovery is now uh, moved out of range of our communications. Satellite system will regain communications with the spacecraft in actually about two minutes. And we're three and a half minutes away from the start of this engine firing to begin its descent to Florida. Discovery's uh, course as it descends uh, across the Pacific Ocean uh, towards Florida. We'll take it across the uh, 
northern uh, tip of the Aleutian Islands off of Alaska's coast, and then it will make landfall uh, proper above North America on the uh, west coast of Canada, just south of the Alaskan border. We'll continue across uh, the Midwest United States on its uh, final course uh, toward Florida, and as it approaches runway 15, we'll perform a left overhead turn of 349 degrees to align with the runway. Now just a few seconds away from regaining communications with the spacecraft and uh, just over a minute away from the start of this engine firing to begin Discovery's descent. Houston with you on the west. Good config for the burn. We're watching. Now 30 seconds away from the start of the burn. Discovery Houston with you on the west. We like your config for the burn. We're watching. Propulsion officer reports both engines are working well as uh, Discovery continues uh, its engine firing. Again, uh, this is a 3 minute and 56 second long firing of the orbital maneuvering system engines. Results in a total change in velocity for discovery of about uh, 405 feet per second, or just about uh, 307 miles an hour, enough uh, to begin its descent uh, towards Earth's atmosphere. Discovery will first encounter the effects of Earth's atmosphere in about uh, 34 minutes.
Now over uh, halfway through the engine firing, all continuing to go very well. Again, it's a 3 minute and 56 second long firing. About a minute and a half left to go. Pulsion officer reports that engine firing looks good. Discovery's now about... Uh, Discovery, we see a good burn. Go ahead. Okay, so I wanted to let you know. We concur. Discovery's now about 28 minutes, over 28 minutes away from encountering the first effects of Earth's atmosphere at an altitude of about 400,000 feet. Discover you also uh, maneuver to an orientation uh, for that encounter with the atmosphere with the nose angled up 40 degrees and the wings level. In addition, excess uh, propellant will be dumped from the forward reaction control system steering jets. You can touch down at the Kennedy Space Center's runway 15 as planned for 1.19 p.m. Central Time. Discovery is currently at the high point of its uh, past orbit, 194 nautical miles. It will begin descending and uh, free-falling until it uh, encounters those first effects of the atmosphere at an altitude of 400,000 feet. Or a about uh, 68 nautical miles high. Excess propellant is now being dumped out of the forward reaction control system jets. 
to uh, empty those tanks in preparation uh, for the re-entry into the atmosphere and landing in Florida. Discovery on the nighttime side of Earth, just about to cross above the west coast of Australia. This track will take it uh, across uh, central Australia. And Houston, Discovery for Earth, GMC. Go ahead, Discovery. Okay, we're powering down the gimbals. Okay, Charlie, GNC's watching. Discovery is also maneuvering again to uh, orientation for its uh, in first encounter with the atmosphere. That uh, orientation has Discovery's nose angled up about uh, 40 degrees from horizontal and uh, wings level. And discovery on your maneuver display would like an item 27 to retract the maneuver.
Discovery's altitude now about 175 nautical miles, and the spacecraft's about 19 minutes away from encountering the first effects of Earth's atmosphere. Again, uh, that point known as entry interface comes at an altitude of about 400,000 feet, or about uh, roughly 68 nautical miles high. Discovery is maneuvered into the proper orientation for its encounter with the atmosphere, nose angled up about 40 degrees and wings level. Discovery's altitude is now 165 nautical miles as it continues to descend toward the atmosphere. Again, uh, it will encounter the atmosphere now in about 17 minutes. As a uh, discovery descends into Earth's atmosphere and uh, air pressure increases, discovery will form a series of uh, four banks or uh, three bank reversals to dissipate speed as it uh, makes its way across the Pacific Ocean and uh, Canada and the central United States towards Florida. Also, as Discovery descends into uh, the thicker portions of the atmosphere, gradually the uh, aero surfaces for the shuttle will take over to uh, turn the spacecraft into a glider, um, compensating for the steering jets. Uh, the roll steering jets will be the first to de be deactivated as uh, air pressure increases to the amount that will allow the ailerons to operate uh, for control of roll of the vehicle. Uh, next, the pitch thrusters will be deactivated. As soon as the uh, elevons become and acquire sufficient air pressure to control pitch of the vehicle. And uh, last, as uh, Discovery nears its final approach to Florida, the yaw thrusters will be deactivated to allow the rudder to control yaw steering of the spacecraft.
Discovery Houston with some updates for you. Go ahead, Charlie. Charlie, the uh, forecast at the Cape, 3,000 scattered, 30,000 thin broken, 7 plus. Winds have swung around down the runway 170, 12 gust to 20, altimeter 30 decimal 08. It's 83 degrees. We're going to use the nominal aim point, puts you 2,700 feet down with 16% speed brake. Okay, Charlie, we copy the weather. Understand uh, the winds now 170 at 12, gust to 20, 3008 on the altimeter, nominal aim point 16% on the speed brake. It's a good copy. And uh, Discovery, uh, okay. one item, clean up on the WCSD Act. Uh, when you get there, we just want to make sure we get the vacuum vent ISO closed before EI. Okay. We'll be sir. And discovery check auto on your DAP again. Mechanical Systems Officer reports all three of Discovery's auxiliary power units are now up and running. The auxiliary power units supply power to the hydraulic systems for the shuttle. All uh, up and running and looking good. Discovery's altitude now 130 nautical miles as it continues to descend uh, toward the atmosphere. It will encounter the first effects of Earth's atmosphere in about uh, ten and a half minutes.
Discovery is continuing uh, northward across the Pacific Ocean, just off uh, the coast of Japan, altitude now 100 nautical miles. Just under six minutes away from its first encountering the effects of the atmosphere.
Discovery's altitude now 72 nautical miles. And uh, in just about a minute or so, the shuttle will begin encountering the first effects of Earth's atmosphere. As it uh, makes its way across the uh, far northern Pacific, of course, it will take it uh, across the uh, tip of the Aleutian Islands before making landfall above the Canadian coast. Also, Discovery's about to move into sunrise. As Discovery descends through the atmosphere, it will uh, make a series of four banks, or uh, three roll reversals, designed uh, to dissipate speed as it approaches Florida. Discovery now encountering Earth's atmosphere. Altitude according to onboard navigation from Discovery, 371,000 feet. Discovery with uh, nose angled up at 40 degrees and uh, wings level. Discovery is currently 4,100 nautical miles from the Kennedy Space Center. as it continues to descend into the atmosphere. Discovery's current speed is 17,100 miles an hour. Discovery's altitude now 300,000 feet, range to the Kennedy Space Center 3,600 nautical miles. This discovery uh, makes its way towards the Canadian coastline.
Discovery continuing to enter the atmosphere with its uh, nose angled up at an angle of about 40 degrees and wings level. An orientation that uh, controls heating of the spacecraft. Altitude now 260,000 feet. Discovery speed 17,000 miles an hour. Discovery is now beginning the first of four banks that will perform as it uh, approaches towards Florida. Banking to the left with wings angled. About 70 degrees to horizontal. We've lost communications with Discovery uh, due to the plasma sheath around the vehicle. We expect to regain communications shortly as uh, Discovery continues its descent into the atmosphere. Again, Discovery's uh, steep bank 
to the left interferes uh, with communications between it and the satellite tracking network. Flight controls will be standing by to regain communications with the spacecraft uh, shortly as it continues its descent. Now about 20 minutes from touchdown at Kennedy Space Center's runway 15. Flight controllers uh, standing by to regain communications with Discovery. Last uh, sight of the communications. All systems were in good shape on board with Discovery on course and at the proper speed and altitude. Again, uh, Discovery's steep uh, bank angle to the left and its course across North America interferes with communications uh, between Discovery's antennas and the satellite communications network.
Discovery is now 15 minutes from touchdown as it continues across the central United States. Communications uh, regained with the spacecraft, altitude now 160, 194,000 feet rather. Speed 11,200 miles an hour. Range 2, Kennedy now 800 nautical miles. Discovery's reversed its uh, bank to the left, now banking back to the right in the first of three bank reversals or roll reversals that will be performed. Discovery with wing wings angled now 92 degrees to horizontal as it uh, banks to the right. Discovery Houston, we're back with you on T2C. Sorry for the LOS there. We got on an un unexpected antenna for a bit. Okay, that's perfectly fine, Charlie. Uh, it's a really beautiful ride in, uh, looking at all the sights and uh, vehicles performing very well right now. Sounds great. Discovery speed now 9,400 miles an hour. We have an update with you on uh, what to expect on the hack. Uh, due to the large turn angle, uh, initially you'll see the GSI showing you high by about 2,000 feet. It'll converge. Uh, the guidance needles will be correct. Okay, Charlie, we copy that. Altitude now 177,000 feet. Range 2 Kennedy, 542 nautical miles. And discovery further on that, uh, you'll, you'll be able to get a good GSI by the 270 turn to go. Okay, we got As discovery makes its final approach to runway 15, it will make a 300 49 degree left overhead turn around the heading alignment circle. An imaginary circle created by the microwave scan beam landing system to assist in aligning the vehicle with the center line of the runway. Discovery is continuing a bank to the right with wings angled about 60 degrees to horizontal. Discovery's altitude now 158,000 feet. Speed Mach 9, about nine times the speed of sound, or 6,500 miles an hour. We'd like to take that out. Okay, Discovery, stand by one second. Discovery, take tack hands to the pass for the time being. We copy, Charlie. Take tack hands to the pass only. Good copy. That call telling the crew to take uh, tactical air navigation data, supplemental navigation information on uh, the spacecraft's position and direction toward the Kennedy Space Center, supplied by a radio beacon from the ground.
Discovery, you can take TAC ends to the BFS. Okay, Charlie, take TAC ends to BFS. We now have it to pass and BFS. And your energy ground track and never go. We copy. Discovery is at the proper speed, uh, good navigation, and on the correct course for the Kennedy Space Center. Altitude now 124,000 feet. Discovery speed Mach 5.4, about 5.4 times the speed of sound, or about 3,600 miles an hour. Discovery has reversed its uh, right bank now, banking back to the left with wings angled about 43 degrees to horizontal. Range 2 Kennedy, now 147 nautical miles, according to onboard navigation from the spacecraft. Again, as Discovery makes its final approach to runway 15, We'll perform a left overhead 349 degree turn around the heading alignment cylinder to align with the runway. Range to Kennedy Space Center is now 90 nautical miles. Discovery's altitude is 97,000 feet. Discovery's current speed 2,300 miles an hour. Discovery banking back to the right now. Wings angled about uh, 40 degrees to horizontal. Discovery, take air data. Okay, it's in work. Call indicates that Discovery can use information gathered from air data probes, two probes deployed from the nose of the spacecraft, to supplement the onboard navigation. The air data probes supplement uh, the information for air speed and altitude using barometric pressure and wind speed. This view from an infrared camera at the Kennedy Space Center shows Discovery as it makes its approach. Distance uh, to the Kennedy Space Center for Discovery is now 66 nautical miles. Discovery speed 1,700 miles an hour. This view of Discovery again from a long-range tracking camera. Discovery is now five and a half minutes away from touchdown on runway 15 at the Kennedy Space Center. Altitude 70,000 70, feet. 
Discovery's speed is 1,100 miles an hour. Discovery's wings level now as it uh, closes in on the heading alignment circle, an imaginary circle around which it'll make a 349 degree left overhead turn to align with the runway 15. Discovery Houston, on energy approach in the hack. The only change we got is a little bit of smoke in the area should not impact your viz. You go for a nominal drag shoot deploy. Okay, we copy Charlie, nominal drag shoot deploy. That call to Discovery indicates that it's at the proper speed and altitude as it approaches the heading alignment circle around which it will make a 349 degree turn to align with the runway. Discovery now subsonic. And uh, Discovery is beginning its turn around the heading alignment circle. Wings angled now about 42 degrees to the left. Altitude 50,000 feet. Discovery speed 560 miles an hour as it continues around the heading alignment circle. Range to touchdown for Discovery is now 20 nautical miles. Discovery's altitude is now 28,000 feet. Continuing in a left bank around a heading alignment circle, an imaginary circle created by the microwave scan beam landing system to align with runway 15. Range to touchdown now 14 nautical miles. Discovery slightly low at the 180. Okay, we copy Charlie and correcting. Discovery now has 180 degrees to go in this uh, turn, a 349 degree turn to align with the runway. Altitude now 23,000 feet. Discovery on energy at the 90. Copy Charlie, on energy at the 90. That call indicating that Discovery is at the exact proper speed at, with 90 degrees left to go in this turn. Altitude now 10,000 feet. And Houston Discovery, uh, we have the Pappies in sight on board. Did you look great? Okay, we see on and on Discovery, surface winds 150 at 13, peak 16. Please. Call indicating that Discovery's on the proper glide slope and aligned with the center of runway 15. Altitude now 5,500 feet. Three thousand feet.
Main gear touchdown. Drag shoots deployed. Nose gear touchdown. Discovery rolling out after the first United States Russian cooperative space flight. Welcome home, Discovery. Prekrasna, i dobro pozdravljavate, Sergey. You've paved the way for a new era of cooperation in human spaceflight, leading to our international space station. Great job. CDR, NCC on 259.7. Oh, Convoy Commander, we read you loud and clear. Got you loud and clear also, Charlie. Welcoming committee is on its way. All right, good to hear your voice. Discovery Houston, no post-landing deltas. You're cleared to press with a checklist. Okay, we're on the way, Charlie. Discovery's uh, landing times for main gear touchdown. Was it uh, mission elapsed time of eight days, seven hours, nine minutes, and 22 seconds? Discovery, ET and Bell Cold is coming up. We copy, Ken. Or a central time of 1.19.22 p.m. Nose gear touchdown followed at uh, 8 days, 7 hours, 9 minutes, 41 seconds, or central time of 1.19.41 p.m. And a wheel stop came at 8 days, 7 hours, 10 minutes, 13 seconds, or 1.20.13 p.m. central time. Crew's now safing the vehicle as it uh, awaits the arrival of the convoy. Test Ken, that's not required today. Okay, thanks. Houston Discovery 
question for Max. Go ahead, Charlie. Okay, on page 5-4 of the uh, post-landing checklist, switch list, uh, under landing gear safing, panel A-12, the uh, checklist, okay, um, okay, we, we think we saw the, we think we saw the problem, hold on. Okay, we're watching. RJDs are off, the side hatch, the drag chute, and the landing gear are safe. Okay, we copy, Charlie, thanks. Discovery Houston, you have a go for the G9 transition. You can leave the BFS and run for now. Okay, Charlie, we have a go for the G9 transition, and we'll leave the BFS and run for your call. Good copy. Discovery Houston, you have a go for SSME repositioning. We'd like the rain drain position. That'll be a zero two. We'll have a couple of notes for you in a few minutes on uh, ammonia activation. We expect that here shortly. Okay, Charlie. Thanks very much.
Discovery Houston for Charlie on Ammoniac. Okay, I'm ready, Charlie. Charlie, we'd like on page 5-8, we'd like you to do the Ammonia Act utilizing the OV-102 steps and then select Ammonia Controller Alpha to pry GPC. Okay, understand. Do the uh, OV-102 steps right up at the top and you want uh, Ammonia Pry Alpha, uh, Ammonia Alpha to pry GPC. That's a good copy. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, that phrase used to welcome Discovery home, uh, as stated by spacecraft communicator Charlie Precourt here in Mission Control, uh, the Russian phrase that was used uh, was translated uh, is, means, uh, great job, welcome home, Sergey." Again, uh, that was the phrase uh, stated in Russian by spacecraft communicator Charlie Precourt as he welcomed Discovery home. Look like good FSME repositioning. And Ken, we concur with that. Looks good. Okay, pressing ahead with speed break uh, repositioning for range rate. And we do need that, Ken. You have a go for speed break repositioning. This is Mission Control Houston aboard Discovery. The crew is continuing to safe the shuttle as uh, the convoy, ground convoy, continues to approach it and uh, prepare it uh, for being serviced. Here in Mission Control, uh, STS-60 Mission Operations Rep Representative Gary Cohen has just taken a call from the Mir Control Center in Kaliningrad, Russia, uh, congratulating them on the return of the shuttle flight.
Houston, we saw good speed brake repositioning, uh, ready for AP Houston. Discovery, we concur. You have a go for the APU shutdown, and uh, sniff checks are complete. Your go to DOF suits as well. Roger. We copy that, Ken. Stand by. We'll give you the uh, the rest of your uh, activities here. Discovery, uh, you go now for event positioning. That's your work. And Charlie, I'm working PCSDX. Copy that, Charlie. Okay, we copy. You have a go for that and also for the forward manifolds. The whole thing's a go. Roger.
here at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. KSC's convoy team is safing the orbiter, getting it ready for the departure of the STS-60 astronauts. The crew will be leaving in the crew transport vehicle, and they are not scheduled to uh, make a walk around the vehicle this, at this uh, particular landing. There are some biomedical experiments uh, that will be conducted uh, on this flight post-landing that uh, the data needs to be uh, determined. Preliminary numbers on the rollout distance uh, on the runway here at the shuttle landing facility, uh, that number would be about 8,000 feet. Again, that is a preliminary number for the distance discovery rolled out on the runway. For the next uh, couple of hours on the runway, the team will be safing the vehicle and the payload members will be removing time-critical experiments from the uh, crew module. And uh, within a couple of hours, discovery will be towed to the orbiter processing facility for post-flight inspections and subsequent removal of the STS-60 payloads, including the Wake Shield facility and the SpaceHab-2 module. Things are going well here at Kennedy Space Center with the landing and recovery team. Again, in the next couple of hours, Discovery will be towed over to the processing hangar for uh, post-flight inspections. Discovery uh, will be flying again uh, in September. The vehicle will be taken off of flight status for several months while it undergoes routine maintenance and inspections that are required after a certain number of flights. This is the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Discovery, go for extended power up. Roger, Houston, go for extended power.
Charlie, just to uh, get you up with us, RCS owns valve test complete. Okay, we see that too, Ken. We got one uh, cleanup for you. We'd like to see the uh, left ohms cross feeds, two of them to open till you get the talk back open, then back to GPC. Okay, I understand left ohms cross feeds. You want them open? That's firm. Left ohms cross feeds, two to open, talk back open, then GPC. And can we see that now? Thanks. Okay, Charlie, we copy, concur. Okay, Charlie, you have a go. Gloria's watching. Hello, Gloria.
the uh, run is working the MS system DAC for extended power up. Page 5 18. We copy, Charlie. Thanks. Discovery Houston for Charlie. Mushy, mushy. Charlie, uh, Charlie, yeah, Charlie, we uh, are about ready to reconfigure the ammonia. We'll give you a heads up in a second here to go over the Bravo with some steps. Just wanted to give you a heads up. Okay, Charlie, I'm standing by. Your wish is my command. By the way, we were reviewing some of your landing footage, and the drag chute looked excellent.
This is Mission Control Houston as we continue to watch playbacks of Discovery's uh, landing at uh, the Kennedy Space Center runway 15. The post landing press conference is currently scheduled for 2.30 p.m. Central Time on NASA television. Again, that will feature uh, Brewster Shaw, Shuttle Program Manager, and Entry Flight Director Jeff Bannell. Again, that post landing press conference is currently scheduled for 2.30 p.m. Central Time on NASA television. Discovery Houston on your ammonia. Okay, we're ready, Charlie. Charlie, what we're going to do is back out of the OV-102 steps and then get on the Bravo controller for the ammonia. We need uh, ammonia controller alpha to off. That's complete. And we need rad bypass manual select loop two to rad flow. Should get talkback rad in about three seconds. Okay, great, and RAD bypass valve mode 2 to auto. Complete. And final step, ammonia controller Bravo to secondary on. Complete. Okay, thanks, Charlie.
Comtech. And uh, ask Houston, you're loud and clear, Mary Ellen. Okay, have you loud and clear as well? Hey, Charlie, since uh, the ask is here, I'm going to be departing, but um, please let me take this opportunity to thank all you folks. It was a superb mission, and I um, really enjoyed working with you. And we, we agree, Charlie. We enjoyed it being able to be part of the team. It was one heck of a flight. We'll see you back home. And please tell Jeff I said thanks very much for everything. And he's listening. This is Mission Control Houston. The crew has now departed at Discovery uh, as it sits on the shuttle landing facility in the crew transport vehicle. Uh, departing uh, for several biomedical examinations, uh, part of ongoing medical investigations that were part of the flight as part of the joint U.S. cooperative investigations. Again, the post-landing press conference for STS-60 is upcoming at 2.30 p.m. Central Time in a little more than 20 minutes from now. And we'll feature Brewster Shaw, Shuttle Program Manager, here at the Johnson Space Center, as well as Entry Flight Director Jeff Bannell. Again, that uh, post-landing press conference is upcoming at 2.30 p.m. Central Time. This concludes commentary for Shuttle Mission STS-60.